guys, it's me, Melly, and it is March 1st, 2016. Um, and as you can see, I'm using my desktop computer today because, um, well, I don't have enough memory to do video on my iPad. And I have to do some um, memory cleaning, so to speak. But this video is going to be a few things. It's going to be a mini book haul. It's going to be my red books of February and my TBR for March. Um, and uh, so let's just get started. So um, I have my, my iPad and I'm looking on Goodreads. And this is Goodreads is how I kind of keep track of what I'm reading, how long, you know, I'm reading it, um, things like that. So for the month of February, and I don't have the books on me. I mean, I'm not going to go around my house and collect all the books. So I'm just going to list them for you. Um, I read Sleeping Murder by Agatha Christie. A Sleeping Murder was just about um, a woman who, a newly married couple whose wife, while he's doing his business affairs, goes to find a home for them in the English countryside and she finds this home and she's instantly drawn to it and she doesn't understand why and um, she purchases the house and she's staying in the house and a, some weird things happen she like um, she's in the house like one day one morning and she goes to get up and she goes walking towards the wall feeling like there should be a door there like she instinctively knew there was a door there but there's no door and certain things in the garden that she's like this should be here and there like she, like she knew the house like the house knew her um and she first she thinks she's going crazy she like imagine she imagines things like she's vision envisioning how to um decorate and seeing things like for example in the nursery she's like this would look nice with this color wallpaper i think it was like blue poppies and something i don't know and there's like a uh it's in this room that she feels could be a nursery um but the cupboard or the closet or whatever how we would call it the closet but i guess it's more like a cupboard type like the old-fashioned type closet built in is kind of painted shut so she has the one of the handyman that is doing these renovations in the house open it and she discovers this wallpaper that she envisioned in the room in the cupboard like wallpapered inside and she starts to think things and she's trying to get information about it and she meets miss marple because obviously sleeping murder is the last miss marple book anyway so she's discovering things about the house and about the people and I'm not going to give it all away, but needless to say that all these things that she discovered, she starts remembering, but she thinks she's going crazy, like that they didn't really happen. She finds out they did happen, and it's things she, you know, they investigate and things start happening. And needless to say, it was a house that she was in as a child. So the house kind of, she didn't pick the house, the house picked her. And they call it sleeping murder because a murder that had happened in the house that was discovered and she saw it and that's kind of so it was like it was never um final it was just lying in wait for the right person to come along and it find out about it anyway long story short that's that book the next book i read in february was city of bones Ooh, excuse me the M mortal instruments number one now I believe I gave it I did give it five stars when because I enjoyed it um it it deserves five stars I gave it five stars but I really would say it's more of like four and a half 4.5 only because the very like once you hit the sorry once you hit halfway through the book it slows and it slows because it's really the characters discovering themselves or the main character clary discovering who she really is where she's really from why she was not told these things why it was kept a secret and trying to find her mother but trying to figure out where she fits in all of this 
and it kind of slowed down but it was the world building and character building of it so that's why i gave it five stars because i understood that you can't jump from character finding out that they're this person or this and they have these powers to the action like that would be like just it wouldn't make sense anyway so i really enjoyed the book and i am continuing the series the next book i read was well, i didn't read it i read the first part of it with the star wars trilogy um i read the first book um, I actually DNF'd it because it read exactly like the movies. If the first book reads exactly like the movies, I've seen all the movies. I actually purchased all first the first of the original three Star Wars to have to start a collection with me and my husband. I'm pretty sure that I started reading the second book, um, and it read just like the movie. Like I can watch the movie and have the book in my hand, and it was word for word. So, I didn't see a point in continuing it. So, that's why I put it on my DNA. But, um, I'm going to keep it as just because it could be a collector's item someday. Who knows? The next book I read was City of Ashes, The Mortal Instruments Number 2. And I gave it five stars. I actually like book two better than I like book one. Why? Because... The main character, Clary, is she's more familiar with what is actually what she really is or who she really is. And now it's just a matter of figuring out how to help her mother and how to help, you know, recover the mortal instruments from her father who is crazy evil but he's evil but not evil he's really just does not agree with the way i guess the clave who is kind of like i guess the government of this world um runs things and he has his own way of wanting to do things um and it's really just about trying to stop him and save her mother at the same time so um it was a lot more action um and it was awesome it really was awesome um and i buddy read that with my friend rose um but i finished before her but now she's on the third book and she's further than me and i'm like ah because now on goodreads she's posting like she's not being detailed but she's like up to page whatever 200 and something and she wrote omg and i'm like oh my god like i'm only on page 100 and something now i gotta like binge read it because i need to find out what that omg was about so like it's <laughs> i'm um it's a lot yeah it's just awesome anyway the next book i read for february the last book i read was from netgalley.com it was an arc um, and it was The Lady in the Smoke, A Victorian Mystery by Karen Oden. And I gave her four stars. This book was about a girl who is a upper class, she's a baron's daughter, I believe. And she's coming home with her mother from the season of, you know, trying to find the husband, whatever, however they call it, in upper class society during Victoria. Victorian error um, and the train gets in an accident and she ends up thrown into this first she's just she's injured and she has to help her mother and she's in the this little town and she's ends up realizing like she wants to help the railroad doctor with victims in this mini inn and she kind of finds things out and she kind of catches feelings for the doctor they go home and she finds out that there's a conspiracy around this accident and in the meantime she besides the doctor she meets a newspaper man and she's trying to find these things out because somehow some way her dowry is connected to the railroad her father passed away and or was yes he passed away and he her part of her dowry is money from the, I guess, 
stocks of the railroad and somehow she finds out that they're not really worth anything anymore and that there's like this whole conspiracy about what's going on with the government the parliament and the railroad and corrupt and how her father was involved and how the mother was involved and she kind of gets thrown into it and against all judgment better judgment she continues on and she figures out this mystery of why her mother is so cold towards her why her mother is uh the way she is and these family secrets and in the end it ends up that she you know the doctor that she fell in love with that she's trying to help solve this mystery um is arrested and he she's trying to help free him because he's innocent and she discovers that you know she's you know uh just um in love with him and she doesn't care what anybody thinks and she helps him and she does free him or she doesn't do it but she helps bring in testimonies be uh and finds things out that will contradict why he's being put on trial because he was put on trial because one of the railroad um railroad victims died and what happened was that the family doctor of this family um took him moved him from where he was at in this inn against this railroad doctor's uh advice and he dies but nobody knows that there's an underlying cause to why he dies but she knows and her best friend knows and her best friend's brother and she has to kind of convince them that we have to help him and she does um and in the end she throws caution to the wind and you know does what she feels best so she goes against everything that in her in this time of um upper class society of her of her class standing would normally do so she goes against the norms so it kind of reminded me of um uh jane austen it's a headstrong upper class uh female who does not agree with the social normal no, the social norms of the time she's not about the um, you know i have to marry in my social class i have to marry someone with money i have to marry you know somebody that's agreeable she wants to marry for love and that's part of the story so anyway i really enjoyed it um i gave it i gave it who i don't even know what i gave it hold on i gave it what did i give it i gave it four stars out of five and four stars on goodreads out of five and the reason was because when it got into the technical details of the railroad and the history not that i didn't find it interesting because it's always interesting because it's a historical mystery but it kind of slowed down where it was like okay that's just too much detail like that wasn't necessary so that's why i gave it four out of five but again i did enjoy it and if you've noticed i don't normally read books that i give less than four stars except for star wars but that's a whole nother story anyway so like I have to really enjoy the book and I want to give it a good rating and if I don't enjoy it I'm not going to finish it and I'm not going to give it a good rating and then there's no point in reading it anyway on to the next part of my video as you guys know yes I do have the city of bones I do have the first three books in the mortal instruments series I purchased the first one for Christmas for my daughter which I've repeated many 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 times um, and I got book two and three on thriftbooks.com but, 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 over the weekend, when I was in the used bookstore, book traders, taking books to trade, or, yeah, to get credit for, I just happened to go in the YA section, or the children's section, because it's not really YA, it's a mix of everything, 
and I saw that they had the rest of the series and I got excited but I was like oh crap because I don't have any money and they didn't give me my credits for my books yet they didn't do it but because I'm a regular in there not like a regular like every day but the guy they know like the one gentleman that's always there on the weekends that when I do go knows my name and I said you know there's books I want but I can't use my credits yet because you haven't done them yet so he said don't worry about it go get the books I'll write them down I'll deduct it from whatever and if there's a balance next time you come in you just pay the balance so I was lucky enough to do that and I, I did have five dollar credit already so whatever I get for these books, I'm hoping it would cover the cost of them. But anyway, so I was able to get, I was able to get, I'm so excited to show you guys, book four. Book four, it's not focusing, focus, which is City of Fallen Angels, and it's in paperback. And as you can see, it's brand spanking new. It's never been read, ever. And this is such a pretty cover. And then I was able to get book five, which does not have a dust cover. It's City of Lost Souls. But um, both books that they had were, it was actually, I guess she had a double copy because it's written on the last name. But um, it's also in very good condition. Um, I'm going to assume that what they did was they kept the dust cover because I actually seen the cover of the hard copy and it's a beautiful cover so I'm going to assume that she liked the cover and kept it but besides that it's in pretty good condition but again so that's fine I don't mind still pretty still pretty and I did not realize that the last book was so huge but it is City of Heavenly Fire which is book six and this is also brand new. Does not look like it's ever been read. So, for the, uh, um, another thing, real quick, another thing. I know that my um, collection is a mix of paperback and hardback, but I don't care. A lot of people are like, um, you know, when they, when they collect a series, they want it to match. And that's fine. But for me, I don't care. If I can find it in paperback, I'll get it in paperback. If I can find it in hardback, it's in hardback. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not picky like that. Um, uh, cause no matter which way you look at it, they're all beautiful books. They're all very, very pretty. Right now, I am currently reading City of Glass, and I am on page... I'm on chapter 8, 177. Don't you love my bookmark? You probably can't see it, but it's like a metallic gold color, which I think works really well. I got their paint chips that I got at Home Depot, and I have one to match each book. Anyway, so, on to the last part of my video, and I'm sorry, it's... The, the video is long guys but you know I'm kind of condensing things so the last part of my video my March TBR and you just looked at it I'm going to finish the City of um, City of Glass <laughs> the Mortal Instruments series because I didn't realize that the fifth and sixth book are lar actually larger than the rest of the series I'm probably going to need possibly the whole month to read it possibly not to finish the series I may take a break in between um if you go on uh, the author Cassandra Clare's website she kind of gives you like there's a question in the um, FAQ section that um, asks which order to read the books in and she recommends reading book one two and three and then reading the infernal devices and then four five and six of mortal instruments I don't think I'm going to do it that way because that just makes no sense to me. I get it because maybe like after book three, you kind of want to do a prequel to it and learn about whatever ends in book three. There may be a reason. Or she says you can read Mortal Instruments and then um, Infernal Devices. It depends. I'm not going to purchase Infernal Devices. Most likely I'm going to get them from Overdrive. Um, 
and do it that way just because I really need to stop buying some books. I mean, my husband, I mean, these are books that my daughter can read too, so like it's not like it's just me, but my husband's kind of like getting a little frustrated, like books, books everywhere, books. And I told him, if you buy me a bookcase, you wouldn't have this problem. Anyway, so that's it for this edition of, um, oh my god, I don't even know what it is. My mini book haul, my books that I read in February, and my TBR for March. You guys have a great day, and I will talk to you soon. Remember, reading is sexy. Also, if you like the video, thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, thumbs down. It's okay. I don't, I don't judge. Have a good one, guys. Bye.